Welcome back folks to Investor Diaries. Roblox has been a publicly traded company since March of 2021 and it has managed to cause quite a stir in this short nine months. But what is this company all about? Why are investors piling in? What is the story around this? We will find out in today's video. So if you're not familiar, Roblox is a video game company. Although that simple description doesn't do a lot of justice to it. So more specifically, think of Roblox as a platform through which anyone can build a virtual world and invite other gamers to play inside that virtual world or digital arena. So Roblox operates an online video game platform that lets young gamers create, develop and monetize games or experiences for other players. The firm effectively offers its gamers a hybrid of a game engine, publishing platform, online hosting and services, marketplace with payment processing combined with a social network. So very specifically, Roblox, the platform, it's actually a closed garden that Roblox controls and it earns revenues in multiple places while benefiting from this outsourced game developer. Unlike traditional video game publishers, Roblox is more focused on the creation of new tools and monetization techniques for its developers than actually creating new games or franchises. And Roblox is increasingly focused on creating a metaverse that moves beyond games towards experiences like concerts, education, and even business management. And interest in this idea has actually exploded in the past few years, ushered along with the COVID-19 pandemic. The company's third quarter revenues grew by a staggering 102% year over year, and the year to date revenues is already up 120%. Well, on a gap basis, it's still in the red, but its recent revenue growth spurt is the one that's made a meaningful dent in its losses. Shrugging off the usual blues that follow a market debut, shares of the company are up a healthy 150% from its IPO. The market seems just as stoked about Roblox today as it did earlier in the year. And Nidish, perhaps it should. Because if I look at the platform, it is 15 years old and it has proven that it has a lasting power that few games in the industry can attain. So that's got everything to do with how the company approaches gameplay. It's also the reason that investors, even those investors that typically prefer to steer clear away of newcomers, may want to put Roblox on their watch list of potential buys in the future. The only thing worth waiting for now is a decent pullback so that new investors can go ahead and buy the stock. So now let's look at some of the key catalysts or tailwinds in favor for Roblox. First is the metaverse. So everyone from Mark Zuckerberg to Satya Nadella to Jensen Huang is talking about it. It is a relatively new term and still not a well-defined one. Broadly speaking though, metaverse is a casual virtual reality that serves as a substitute for the more conventional use of the internet. Now think about this for a second. Rather than going back and forth over say a Facebook Messenger or an Instagram Messenger, you and a friend of yours, or rather all of your friends, can gather in a virtual setting using digital avatars. The metaverse is the virtualization of pretty much anything and everything that you can imagine from say banking to work, to shopping, to social networking, and more. In many ways, the Roblox gameplay is a form of the metaverse. The gaming platform is also an outlet for creators as well as a social gathering place that develops communities in an environment where conventional social networking has turned more than a little toxic. Brands are finding it to be a well-suited means of casually connecting with consumers as well. As an example, let's look at Nike. So Nike is using the Roblox platform as the basis for what's being called Nike Lab. Shoemaker Vans and car maker Hyundai are also leveraging Roblox's virtual world building technology to build and promote their product. And Appy, that's just the tip of the icebergs and as more and more adults are plugging in to this virtual reality, there is a possibility of more interesting such partnerships going forward. And in the meantime, it's no small crowd. Estimates of monthly visitors to Roblox hosted world 
peg its user count at around 150 million. That's actually pretty awesome for a less than mainstream game that hasn't tapped into the sort of marketing firepower that the bigger gaming franchises have at their disposal. So Roblox actually raised a lot of funds. So there was a private offering at the beginning of 2021 followed by a public offering just a few weeks later. And that's exactly the type of firepower that we were talking about. Next catalyst is the developer advantage. Q3 and early Q4 were helped by the popularity of Netflix Squid Games, which developers on the Roblox platform quickly monetized through games of the show. This agility demonstrates the importance of the company's developer community and the competitive advantage underpinning Roblox's ability to attract developers. Roblox knows very well that its fate depends on developers which is why it has very successfully quoted them with 10.5 million developers and its 27 million user generated experiences on its platform. Roblox is winning over developers for three principal reasons, low barriers to entry, distribution and monetization. Now let's talk about each of those catalysts as well. Low barriers to entry. You cannot get 10.5 million developers on Roblox platform if it isn't super easy to develop games on it. Now, traditional AAA game development is increasingly expensive. On an average, it will cost you between 60 to $80 million to develop and launch a AAA game in the market. Now, even if you're not aiming for a blockbuster game, the traditional game development can cost millions of dollars to pay for the servers, developers, and a game engine such as Unreal Engine or Unity, artists, distribution, and many, many more. However, just about anybody can get started as a game developer on Roblox Studios with almost no startup cost. Developers can focus on making great games, while Roblox essentially takes care of everything else. Next catalyst is distribution. Now, compared to the AAA titles that Appy talked about, Roblox games are not graphics intensive. Although this seems like a negative, it is actually a source of competitive advantage. Lower graphic intensity allows for streaming on low-end devices, increasing the ecosystem and creating a more inclusive experience. Moreover, near about anyone can access Roblox game, be it through PCs, Macs, Linux, iOS, Android and Chrome OS. And even if these are older versions, the company has a featured game section and has a recommendation engine to get games in front of its massive 47 million daily active users. In addition, developers can pay to get their games advertised on Roblox or on the market through Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, and other social media platforms. Knowing that there is a large and ready audience for your game makes game development on Roblox a lot less risky. All right, so let's talk monetization. Developers can make money through Roblox with its developer exchange program, better known as DevX, which gives developers 25% of a game's earnings. Now 25%, you might think of it as a low payout rate, but the company offers market leading support and distribution for game developers. Now, although most of the 10.5 million de game developers are not making a lot, the company paid developers $130 million in the second quarter of 2021. Over 600 developers earn over $85,000 a year from their Roblox creation. And one such developer is close to generating $100 million in annual revenue. Developers are also professionalizing by forming companies and getting venture capital. Now, is everything so rosy about Roblox? And the answer is no. So on the risks front, yes, the pandemic clearly has been a major reason why the growth has accelerated over the past couple of years, but now it faces tough competition and skepticism over its long-term organic growth rate. As the economy continues to open, its customers, primary aged school children, they must return to school and may no longer have the time to play 2.6 hours per day on its platform. Now, although Q3 2021 results were better than expected, it was primarily held by Netflix's show Squid Game. So this benefit could be short-lived. And as a result, the company may fail to meet its future growth expectations. That's absolutely right, Nidish. So Squid Games was an example, which brings me to the point of sustainable long-term growth. To sustain the long-term growth, Roblox must hold on to its customers as they age. Approximately 80% of the company's DAUs are under the age of 25 
and the brand is closely associated with child play. The company's ability to appeal to adults remains an open question. However, the company has made notable progress towards addressing this particular concern. Additionally, the company's young user base requires significant investment in the field of safety. The company may face difficulty policing its ecosystem and is at the risk of negative headlines. So the inability to maintain a safe and trusted ecosystem will likely face increasing pressure over the course of the next few months and years. In addition, as the company becomes viewed more as a social media platform, it may come under additional scrutiny. Making money of children who could be addicted to gaming may experience some backlash. So the accusation that the company is profiting from gaming addiction could lower Roblox's ESG scores and some investors may want to avoid investing in Roblox due to ethical concerns. Now let's have a look at the financials. Roblox reported Q3 earnings on 9th November 2021, resulting in stock trading up 42% on the day of earnings. The results are one of the biggest rallies of a large cap stock that we've ever witnessed. Revenue growth was up 28.6% to $638 million in line with the consensus estimate. Gross margin came in at 75% while operating margin came in at 13% compared to 28.6% a year back. EPS for this quarter was negative $0.13. While on the surface, the results do not appear stellar. There was a rising skepticism going into the earnings. Short interest as a percentage of outstanding shares increased steadily since the company's IPO to over 9% before earnings. Skeptical investors believe that Roblox of course will find it difficult to grow after COVID-19 restrictions ease because during COVID-19 people are stuck at home and kids have nothing better than to play video games. However, the company reported that the October bookings was in the range of 189 to 192 million up 15 to 16% year over year, despite a three day outage at the end of the month. In addition, the management noted during the call that early November has been consistent with pre-outage trends. The positive update on Q4 forced many bearish investors to cover their short position. So in conclusion, folks, we really like this company and we think that Roblox is definitely going to play a huge role in the metaverse universe. It's already established itself in the space and it's managed to get some marquee names such as Nike, Vans, Hyundai, which is absolutely amazing. We believe that Roblox has established a sizable moat for itself and it'll take a while for another company to either erode or destroy their moat. However, when it comes to stock price, it is still pricey, although it has come down approximately 10% from its high. It is currently trading at approximately 40 times price to sale, not price to earnings, mind you. Hence, we would suggest to wait for a further pullback and a good entry point range would be around $85 to $105. So folks, this is a great company. We want you to buy the stock, but not at this price. So if you are not an investor, get in the train, put it on your watch list, Keep monitoring the prices. The moment there's a pullback, that's your opportunity. That's a wrap for today, folks. Hope you enjoyed our video and let us know what you think about Roblox in our comments below. And until next time, stay tuned and stay focused. Thank you. Thank you.